Hi again everybody, it's your old pal the History Nerd, and as you can probably tell, we are not in the man cave. No, we're on what my nine-year-old daughter has decided to call History Nerd's Road Trip. Now if you've watched any of the videos on our channel, you know the three things that we talk about most are cowboy hats, cowboy boots, and history. And perhaps no place on earth has more of those three things on display under one roof than the building behind me. So come along with us as we explore the Stetson hats, cowboy boots, and nudie suits of the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. Hank Williams is one of my favorite performers, one of the few individuals enshrined in both the Country Music and Rock and Roll Halls of Fame. And here are Hank Williams' custom boots with guitars, music notes, and his initials. These are just gorgeous boots, folks. Can you imagine the life he lived while wearing these boots, the places he played, the things he saw? And given Rank's reputation, imagine the things he did while wearing these beautiful, beautiful custom cowboy boots. Nudie Cohn was an immigrant to America from Kiev and began his fashion career designing costumes for strippers and burlesque performers. In 1962, he designed an outrageous stage costume with rhinestones and intricate designs and presented it for free to country singer Porter Wagner, thinking that if he wore it on stage, it would draw attention and serve as a walking billboard. He proved correct, because after seeing Porter Wagner's outfit, every country music singer of the era flocked to Nudie Cohn and ask him to, to, to design them a similar costume. Thus, Nudie's Rodeo Taylors was born. This is one of the suits that Nudie designed for Porter Wagner. It's a beautiful suit with covered wagons, cactus, really breathtaking to see in person, and lots of history behind this outfit. Webb Pierce was one of the most successful and prolific country singers of the 1950s and perhaps his biggest hit was one called In the Jailhouse Now. He wore nudie suits on stage, but he didn't stop there. He bought a 1952 Pontiac Bonneville convertible, sent it to Nudie Cone and said, design me a car like no other. And this is the result. Longhorn cattle horns on the front, silver dollars across the dash and on the console hand-tooled leather on the visors and seats, revolvers for door handles, and on the back, even a repeating rifle mounted on the trunk. We saw the custom cowboy boots that Hank Williams Sr. had made that I considered the holy grail. These are a close second. Hank Williams Sr.'s son, Hank Williams Jr., had a pair of boots designed to look quite similar to his father's, with his initials on them, music notes, guitars. They're just gorgeous boots, and they're touching because they're a son's tribute to the father that he lost at quite a young age. These are just cool to look at. No cowboy hats or custom boots in this exhibit, folks, but I had to share it with you. It's the famous cornfield set from Hee Haw, where the costume was worn by Grandpa Jones, Lulu Roman, and my personal favorite, Junior Samples. We said we were going to bring you Stetson hats and custom boots in this video, and this exhibit has both of them. Dwight Yoakam wore this outfit on stage in 1986. It includes his Stetson hat with what looks like it might be a bull rider crease. You can't really see the top. It's not a cattleman crease. It might be a bull rider crease. Rounded brown, which ripped jeans, which were part of his trademark. And then these custom white Austin Hall cowboy boots with sterling silver tips on them. This is one of the craziest and most intricate nudie suits I've ever seen. It's a patriotic number designed by Nudie's Rodeo Tailors for Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. 
red, white, and blue patriotic themed, patriotic boots. Has peacocks on the sleeve. And then when you walk around to the back, you see poker chips on the pants. And the American flag on the back of the nudie suit. Here's an awesome pair of what looks to be well-worn and well-loved cowboy boots designed for Jeff Hanna of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band by Charlie Dunn of Texas with roses going up and down the sides and Jeff Hanna's initials on the front. Here's another stage costume designed by Nudie's Rodeo Taylors for Country Music Hall of Fame member Hank Snow. What's remarkable about this, you can't really see it on video, but Hank Snow could not have stood more than like five feet, six inches tall. This looks almost like a child size costume, uh, but you can tell the nautical theme, the ship sails, the signal flags. It's really a beautiful uh, costume and one that shines in the light when you look at it from every angle. All the guitars Hank Williams owned in his life, this one's considered the finest. The Martin D28. After Hank Williams passed away, it went to his son Hank Williams Jr. who preserved the guitar just like it was when his father died. And Hank Williams Jr. donated it to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. It'd be impossible to put a value on this guitar. But, am I, but imagine the songs that were written and the songs that were played on this beautiful and rare Martin D28 guitar. If you're a fan of the Flying Burrito Brothers, you're familiar with their famous cover from the Gilded Palace of Sin album, where they all wore custom nudie suits. And on display here are the actual nudie suits worn on that album cover. Perhaps the most famous is the one that Graham Parsons wore that has naked women on the lapels, marijuana leaves on the front, pills on the sleeves, and flames going down the side. And if you walk around to the back of the suit, there's some mixed messaging. Marijuana leaves and pills on the front, and a cross on the back. One of my favorite all-time country singers is Don Williams. Do you believe in love, living on Tulsa time? I mean, he is on my playlist just about every time I get in my car. And he was identified with this hat, which was custom made for him by Stetson. What a fabulous relic from a fabulous singer. If you've never heard Don Williams, folks, do you a favor. Get the greatest hits, pour yourself a bourbon, sit back, relax, and prepare yourself to be wowed by one of the most beautiful voices country music has ever known. Stage-worn outfit owned by George Strait. He's got his Wrangler jeans. He's got his team roping buckle that he wore. And he's got his Resist All straw hat. It's no surprise that Strait would have a Resist All hat on display because he makes a uh, branded George Strait hat for the Resist All brand today. He's got a cattleman's crease, braided leather band, vented on the sides to get the heat out. Nice hat. The Country Music Hall of Fame doesn't just focus on classic country stars. It also has exhibits about the stars of today and these suede with Casey boots were worn by superstar Chris Stapleton on the cover of his Traveler album. And it's said that he wore this custom O'Farrell hat as he was writing the song Traveler. You see the cat hat has a braided leather rope band and a Gus crown. It's a cool looking hat and one you would expect Chris Stapleton to wear. Here's a trio of hats 
one made for Brad Paisley by the Sarah Taylor Hat Company. A top hat worn by Big Kenny of Big and Rich, both on stage and in their music videos. And over here, a Resist All Diamond Horseshoe 25X Fur Felt Cowboy Hat that Toby Keith wore in the video for his song, Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. I don't have to tell anybody what this is. One of the Trans Ams used in Smokey and the Bandit 2, in which Burt Reynolds portrayed Bandit Darvel. As uh, in the second one, they were taking an elephant to the Republican National Convention and still being chased by Sheriff Buford T. Justice. Uh, there's lots of Trans Ams on display around the country that claim to be used in Smokey and the Bandit movies. This one has some pre some pedigree with it. This Smoking the Bandit car was later owned by Jerry Reed, who donated it to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Here's an exhibit about uh, Roy Rogers. And as we pan down, we see some custom boots that Roy Rogers wore with winged eagles and hearts on them. And then below those, patriotic red, white, and blue boots worn by his wife, Dale Evans. Country singer Eric Church wore these much-loved boots when he moved to Nashville, Tennessee. And they inspired him to write the song, These Boots, which appeared on his debut album, Sinners Like Me back in 2006. You can tell that he walked many a mile, played many a song, and trod many a stage while wearing these boots. Keith Whitley, a much beloved country singer to this day who died at age 34 from acute alcohol poisoning, wore these very flashy and outrageous red cowboy boots, which have yet leather straps, studded in rhinestones, sterling silver boot tips, and silver chains on them. Imagine what he could have accomplished if he'd been able to battle his demons and live just a few decades longer. Friends, here is a history nerd bonus video. We are at Antique Archaeology, the store in Nashville, Tennessee that's owned by Mike Wolf of American Pickers fame. Many of the items he has purchased on his TV show are on display here in his store, and among them are these. You may remember the episode where he picked the memorabilia of country singer Mickey Gilly, who was a cousin of Jared e. Lewis and the Reverend Jimmy Swaggart. During the show, Mike Wolf purchased these snakeskin cowboy boots that have been cut down and turned into snakeskin loafers. And they're now on display here in his store, Antique Archaeology in Nashville, Tennessee. Also on display here, Antique Archaeology, is this jacket, which was purchased on season 13, episode 13 of American Pickers. This jacket was worn by Evil Knievel himself, the world's greatest stuntman and one of my boyhood heroes during his promotional appearances. It's on display here at Antique Archaeology, but it's listed as not for sale. To those of us who love Evil Knievel, we understand it's priceless. Check out these old boots that are for sale here at Antique Archaeology at only $80. They've been through hell. They're roached out. They're torn apart. But that's actually what makes them cool. Well, that's it, folks. I'm going to wrap up this video outside the Ryman Auditorium, the mother church of country music. It's inside this building that singers like Hank Williams, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, George Jones, and countless others, those singers became legends here. Now, look, 
If you like the content in this video and the others like it on our channel and want to see more of it, I need you to do three things for me. I need you to give me the A hey, Fonzie thumbs up. I need you to hit subscribe and then ring the bell so the next time I fire up the old YouTube gizmo, you will be the first one to know. I'm going to close this video as I close all of my videos by asking all of you to be good, be well, be happy, and goodbye folks from Music City, USA.